Part of evolving as a society means taking a look at how we may shun or embrace those who may look or behave differently than us. As it relates to disabilities, the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, Article 24 on Education, states that we should be enabling persons with disabilities to participate effectively in a free society. And in realizing this right, states' parties shall ensure that persons with disabilities are not excluded from the general education system on the basis of disability, and that children with disabilities should not be excluded from free and compulsory primary or secondary education on the basis of their disability. Action. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a classic example of a physical disability is somebody who is in a wheelchair. Okay. I've seen interviews with people in Trinidad, the man on the street, where they believe that children who require special education services should be separate and apart from the children in tip what they consider to be typical schools. Because I quote, well, there are schools for them, so why should they be allowed to be in schools with our normal children? Okay. Um, can you drill down for us to help people understand how special education impacts on both typical children and children who may have hidden disabilities, uh, learning disabilities, and the obvious uh, physical disabilities that we are accustomed to thinking of or associating uh, disabilities with. Well, I think a lot of that probably comes back from uh, a long time ago. Historically, children with disabilities were always separated. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, initially it was thought that they were crazy and so they would be put in homes for people who can't function, they'd all be lumped together. Uh, same thing would happen for children with sensory impairments and if you had a health condition that basically prevented you from developing normally or if you had any kind of atypical development, uh, there was no therapeutic intervention. You were basically just left to your own devices and so often children had a quality of life that was not really uh, what we would want or what we would expect. As things evolved, I think uh, luckily it became the concept or the understanding based on experience and research that children can benefit from education in an environment where there are typical development children as well as atypical development. Both parties, uh, to me, uh, benefit from that relationship. Children who, are, who need or require special education services are interacting with a daily basis with their pairs. And on the other hand, children who don't need special education service also develop an awareness that children are different. Yes, I may be good at art, you may be better at reading. You may be not so good at reading and math, but you are good at painting or you can do puzzles or so on. So I think that as things developed over the years, it became the norm, especially in certain societies, that you have special education services in an integrated curriculum. Uh, so you may have over the years heard the terms mainstreaming and inclusion and so on. A big part of that societal way of thinking has to do with the education and the culture of that country or so, and it can be changed. People always assume that because this is the way, this is the way it should be, this is the way it has always been, and there's no reason for it to change. Uh, I know that with education, things can change because we've seen it change over the years. And it's a win-win situation, again, like early intervention, and it's beneficial to both parents and teachers. But I think when it comes to the segregation, especially in terms of, like you just used, where you're, they're talking about we and them and those children, and I often ask parents who say those things, I ask them to explain to me, when you say those types of children, can you tell me specifically what you mean by those types of children and tell me specifically how that child differs from your child? And then once they've come to an understanding that yes, they may be functioning 
on different levels, whether it be cognitively or physically, when they start to drill down to the fact that they're still children and the children did not create those situations for themselves, neither did the parents. I definitely see sometimes where that light bulb comes on and they start to process the information. They may not change their mind immediately, but I can always see that different way of thinking, especially when I ask this particular question. Okay, let's forget about your child for this moment. And I want you to think about that child that you're thinking about or talking about that wants to come into your class, your child's class, who may be autistic. Let's turn the tables. Tell me how you would feel or what do you think the teacher or the principal should do if that child was yours. I want you to switch roles now and you're that child's mother. Tell me, what do you think? And that's where you usually see uh, the change in the methodology of thinking and to a certain accept extent, acceptance. This has gone past stability. It is about our ability to tap into our humanity and our willingness to transform into a more inclusive society. Think about that until we see each other again. Don't forget to like and share our Facebook pages, Cause and Effect, a very special disabilities forum, and you can like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Cause and Effect TT. See you soon.